Hello and welcome to the SC Playbook Podcast, proudly brought to you by Pat and George from Mortgage Choice SCW. I'm not your host, Tim Williams. The founding father and the regular man behind this desk is currently gallivanting around Europe on a well-earned round 19 buy. Uh, I'm very proud to be his auto emergency for the week. Um, my name is Max Bryden. Listeners to the BBL SC Playbook Podcast might recognise my voice. Um, and today, unfortunately, get to see my face, but very happy to be in a seat for what is round 19 of the Supercoach season uh, and to talk through all of the action with me this week on the uh, pod. We've got, at first, the 91st finish in the 2021 season. It's the SC Spy. Spy, how's it going? Yeah, two years ago, mate, when things were going so, so well. Uh, I was saying last week how I was going through a bit of a, a dark patch in Supercoach. It's got worse, boys. I'll give you the tip. <laughs> I've uh, managed to plug out a 12.90 on the weekend, which looks pretty good on paper, but when there's something like 400 tons in the other games and you don't own 396 of them, it's nobody good. So, yeah, you mentioned 91st a couple of years ago, 12 months ago, almost to the day, I had a little look back and I was sitting just on the edge. I just cracked into the thousands. I was looking at back-to-back -to -back top 100 finishes. That was the goal anyway. Well... I'm 13,000th. I've plummeted another 3K. Uh, it's just not happening, boys. Obviously, I will battle in and stick solid and see what we can do. But can I ask, and I hope, is it just a case of form being temporary, class permanent, boys? Hopefully. I guess we'll find out. Uh, and someone who actually really knows what they're doing, our <coughs> other member today, Des Creek, first placed in 2019. Des, welcome back, mate. How's it going? Good, good. Um, good to have you on, Maxie. Of Bryden, Bryden's lawyer's fame. That's the one, mate, back in the day. That's it, that's <laughs> it. Um, yeah, I'm not going as bad as the spy. I'm coming around 1700th or a little below that. Um, scored 1467 last week, so a pretty solid score, but I didn't have Caelan Ponga, <coughs> which I was filthy about because I started the season with Ponga. I was telling you boys before the podcast, and then in round two he went down with that HIA and got one point. And then I just said, never again. I threw him in the bin after I said, you know, he's going to have a good season. He'll, he'll have a bounce back season. But then, yeah, that's just the way it goes sometimes. Just haven't been able to go up the rankings at all the last sort of couple of months. That's just, that's super coach. I don't know what you put it down to sometimes. Is it just, is it just bad luck or is it you're not playing super coach very well? I feel like it's a bit of both. <laughs> I feel like you've got to take personal responsibility. So I'm doing that. Bit of ownership. Yeah. In saying that, you're, what, you're 1700th, it's, you've still got, plenty, got of, high standards. plenty of time to crack into yeah. that top yeah. top four or five. So, yeah, mate, you've got me covered at the moment. That's it. Tell you what, I'm steaming home. I will be steaming home, and you know when I do. <laughs> we don't doubt you, Spy. Steaming home into the top 10K. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got about eight or nine weeks left in this season. Uh, we're here today to talk about the Round 19 by after what's been an absolutely crazy round of Supercoach. 16 players with tons overall this week. 12 of them came in games against the Tigers, Dragons and Bulldogs. Um, but I thought before we get into all of the action today, <coughs> given you've got the substitute teacher there, might just uh, act up a little bit and do something that we never see Timmy do on the pod. That's going to be cracking a bloke. So, Best substitute ever. <laughs> Look at this bike. Well, don't tell him you... Probably won't hear this until tomorrow morning when he's in Europe sometime gallivanting around there. But cheers, Timmy. Thanks for the seat, man. You'll be lucky to get it back after this, I reckon. Yeah, good. You enjoy that one, boys. <laughs> I'm actually off the drink officially for a little period. Just been crook. Keep getting crook. Uh, so off the drink for about eight days. That's it, man. Well, there's a, a big word of advice. Drink water. Drink water. Thanks, there mate. Red hot tip there. All right. On to the show. So... Big action-packed show. It's around 19 by, so less team news to talk about, although, so we're going to dive into a few different strategy options uh, today. So we'll be covering first the strategy chat, how we're going to be navigating this final major buy round, round 19 coming up this weekend. Uh, we'll talk through some of the emerging options at fullback and 5.8. It's been a real murky picture, but we're starting to get a little bit of clarity. Uh, we'll talk how to prep for head-to-head -head finals, a topic I've been really passionate about this year, so I'm happy to share uh, a few things that I'm seeing in the draw and a few different tactics for people who are focusing on how to try to win their league. 
and we'll also go into the hot topics for this week and talk about the most traded in and traded out. But let's start first with TLT, all the team's news. We know so many people will be missing this week through Origin uh, and there's plenty of shocks as well in some of the team selections. And I'll tell you what, I woke up this morning, I think I looked, had about 13 or 14 for the buy round and I'm down to 10. So without further ado, Game 1, West Tigers versus Cronulla Sharks at Combank Stadium. Sean Bloor, the experiment at left to RF, uh, he's out. John Bateman will move back to 12, and Fanua Pule, um, Fanua Pole rather, will be starting at lock. Um, Atasi James to debut in Jersey 7. Uh, wholesale changes at the Tigers have also <coughs> ditched that whole left edge. Um, sorry, right edge. Uh, David Nofa Luma's gone. Brent Naden's gone. Uh, Asua Kapoa and Tommy Talao, they're back. For the Sharks, Cam McInnes named it lock. Dale Finucane can find a suspension, that fella, starting at lock. Now, McInnes, last time he came in and started at lock, I think it was round 16, and he scored a ton, I'm pretty sure, with a try through the middle. Any interest by uh, the short-term play at Cam McInnes with Dale Finucane out? No, mate. Uh, if I'm going to go short-term, it's going to be massive upside, those kind of guys. Uh, so not for me. Worth noting at the Tigers, though, Bateman owners, we spoke last week about how being in the middle would be a really good thing, but he ended up getting... Pulled off, what, halfway through the game? Minutes, yeah. yeah, so maybe just those 80 guaranteed on the edge is safer for owners. Maybe not quite as busy, but he'll find his work anyway, and hopefully it solidifies the defence for the Tigers on an edge, which means more ball in play as well. So not necessarily a bad thing if you're a Bateman owner. Certainly um, one to keep yeah. an eye on for sure. Game two, St George versus the Canberra Raiders <coughs> at Wynn Stadium in Wollongong. Tyrell Sloan, gone. Nowhere to be seen, and Paul Turner in at fullback. Uh, the man who was formerly of the Warriors and Gold Coast fame is getting his start in the number one jersey at the Dragons. No sign as well of Jack Bird, who continues to have those issues with his knees. For the Raiders, Trey Mooney. He's one of those guys who's been a super coach cheapie for about three seasons now. He will be debuting off the bench uh, at a Mariota at lock, replacing our horse bro, who is in origin for the Raiders. Uh, into Game 3, the Parramatta Eels versus New Zealand Warriors and wholesale changes at the Parramatta Eels as well with so many impacts from State of Origin. Number one jersey taking it off Clint Gutherson, Sean Russell. Right winger up there. He doesn't have dual, uh, but certainly um, an interesting player, particularly if you're looking at um, a head-to-head matchup for one week or even draft players. Uh, Ryan Madison, named at six. Desi Creek, you're an owner. What do you think of that? Yeah, you know what? <coughs> At first, I was like, I, I don't hate it, but you kind of talked me around into hating it. Very <laughs> um, yeah, obviously, Maddo, you want him to, you know, you want him to play 55, 60 minutes. You know he's going to crank out 60 in base. That's what he does. But you never know. With 80 minutes, he might. I think he's still going to run the ball. He's a ball running 5'8". So he should still get through his work a fair bit. You know, I, I expect him to get 50, 60 still. Quick fire question. Would you buy him? Yes, no. No. Fair enough. Um, a guy who, it's great to see his name on the bench, Sean Lane, returning from a lengthy out this season. Just hasn't been his year so far. Um, I get the feeling, Maxi, just cut in there, that the return of Shorty Lane could be the return of the spy, mate. We've been on the same trajectory this year. <laughs> He's back, baby. Let's, Let's do hope it. so. Speaking of uh, people in Spies team, there was a few <coughs> rumours going around that uh, Sean Johnson would miss the game for the New Zealand Warriors. Uh, to, due to the birth of, I think, his second child. Uh, another thing you've got in common with him, Spy. Yep. Uh, but thankfully, he has been named for owners, um, <coughs> albeit it's going to be a watch on teams to see if he um, will make the journey uh, over to Australia and play that one at Combank Stadium. But so far named. Um, no other major changes of note at the Warriors, although Freddie Lussick has been named in Jersey 17. So if there are any Wade Egan owners um, and, you know, a guy who owns him in draft, geez, I sound like the guru up here always talking about a draft team, don't I? Um, Mate, he, you get pretty invested in draft, don't worry about that. Very it's all good on game. the line. So yeah. Shout out to all the boys in the Abernathy Cup <coughs> this year. Uh, but Freddie Lussick in the bench, he might take a few minutes off him. Uh, getting on to Game 4, Rabbitohs versus Bulldogs at Olympic Park. And again, another team with a lot of changes. Uh, Jake Avarillo named at fullback for the Bulldogs and new centre pairing of <coughs> Braden Burns and Jackson Topany. Jackson Topany has been playing lock uh, to the best of my knowledge in reserve grade for the whole mm. season, but he'll be lining up in the centres for the Canterbury Bulldogs who conceded, I think, 66 of the best of them to the Newcastle Knights on the weekend. So sounded like it could be a really huge game for the <coughs> Rabbitohs, but then you've got to look at their side as well and wholesale changes off decimated the back of the Decimated, the boys. Decimated. 
And this is really bad news for owners. And I'll get your thoughts on this one, Desi. Richie Kenner has been dropped. What do you think of that? Yeah, not happy. Not happy. I brought him in, I think, with Timmy a couple of weeks ago for the, for the price rises and anticipating that he would play this game. <laughs> I just yeah I didn't I didn't foresee Monroe at all, but he looks a good he looks the goods, and I'm I'm considering just bringing him in straight up just a straight swap Canada Monroe, gets me an extra number for this round, and yeah he he, he looks like a solid little player so, but yeah I think this game could be much closer than than people think, I think uh, Maddie's Matty the water boy is sitting over there he's going no nah, no way Bunny's <laughs> gonna kill him. I thought I was an absolute genius on the weekend, Sunday night, um, just looking at some odds and I jumped on with some bonus bets. The line for the Tiger Sharks game was about 14. I'm like, oh, the way it's going, that should be pretty comfortable and it'll blow out. It's currently at like 21 already. Wow. And then I just added in 13 pass for South. But now they've lost half their side, so <laughs> all of a sudden yeah, it's not looking great, but it could happen. That's it. Tyrone Munro on the right wing. <coughs> Tane Milne recalled as well. He'll be playing at right centre. Um, significant outs. Well, you probably would have heard the news already. Cody Walker into the State of Origin squad for the New South Wales Blues. Absolutely devastating news for owners by myself. And I'll be keen to have a chat and get your thoughts because we know as well as South has got the buy in round 20, um, which is a big blow for owners there. And the other one as well, Campbell Graham. Uh, he's battling with injury recently. That sternum, he just can't seem to get it right at the moment. And he is still out um, the final game of the round, Game 5, the Gold Coast Titans versus the Dolphins at Seabus Stadium. Jaden Campbell will play fullback, covering for uh, AJ Brimson, who will be with Queensland of the State of Origin squad. Jaden Campbell, 5'8", fullback as well. He's got that dual status. He's quite cheap. I think he's about 370k interest from you, Desi. Well, I've got Schuster there, and I was planning on bringing in Munster. But, yeah, Campbell's an interesting one. He, he does go well at fullback. I mean, but you kind of just want to use your trades on players you're going to keep to the end of the season. Now it's it's kind of too late to go for someone like for like uh, for Jaden. But yeah, I, I think you could probably get away with it in head to head, maybe. But I think for overall, steer clear. Certainly, good play in head to head if you're in, if you're playing this round, especially, and if you need a win, get in a value proposition like that. Not too bad at all. Don't mind it. Only thing I'd caution is the uh, Titans draw for the rest of the season is one of the tougher ones uh, out there. Um, other changes. So Tino's brother Isaac starting in 2RF so, um, and Khalees Haas as well. So a couple of early season cheapies. Owners will be very, very happy to see those names uh, on the team sheet. And over at the Dolphins, Connolly Lemuela. I think everyone would have sold him by now, all owners who jumped on. The dual 2RF CTW, but he's back <coughs> starting in Excuse the second me. row. Excuse me, Teach. Like oh, I, still, I still own him, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well done, I've, I've come in a bit grim today, but there's a couple of reasons to be positive. We're 2-0 up in the Ashes. Cam Murray's starting in the middle for the Blues, and Lemuel is on an edge, so it's not all bad, mate. Love that. Don't mind it at all. And uh, Cody Nicarima, a bit of a revelation <coughs> at fullback last week. 95 points, available at hooker. Uh, and 5 eighth. Look, it's probably too late to get on at over 600k, but, um, geez, he's had a been one of the cheapies of the year after starting about 250 odd thousand dollars so he'll be starting in at fullback yeah, another one that got away hey absolutely like, even at the time i was like oh like, i probably couldn't do it but maybe he goes well he's just so like so many people this year it's just well and truly exceed expectations but for a long period not just for a few weeks um and if you ask me right now if you said, oh, will he maintain value for the rest of the season at that price? I'd say, well, he could. Yeah. I wouldn't buy him, but he could. Couldn't say no. Yeah, yeah. good if you own him. Absolutely. Just, I get worried <coughs> about the halves rotation up there, even with um, Isaiah Katoa and Sean Sullivan in there. Mm. Um, we still have got um, uh, Anthony Milford on the bench for the Dolphins this week. Um, Wayne just seems to love having as many halves as possible on yeah. the field. Um, the other one of there, of note, if there are any owners still out there, Jeremy Marshall King has been named, uh, but he is in doubt for this week. So just a, one there to keep on to teams <coughs> list as well. So that's the teams. Now let's get on to the major topic for this week, by planning for round 19 and your strategy for the run home. Now... Boys, if you're like me, you would have woken up this morning and, uh, and ha having seen TLT, you've lost a lot more players um, than you would have thought you would have had for round 19. But I guess the good thing is that some of these players are quite highly owned, so we're all in the same boat. So, Desi, I'll start with you. Right now, there's plenty of options on the table for how you're playing your super coach from this point. Are you targeting a player for this round? Are you focusing more on getting a keeper for the run home? Or... Are you trying to look at the season and identify a couple of teams who have got good runs coming up 
and bringing in players? To be honest, I haven't looked at the draw probably as much as you have. Um, there was a player I had in mind who I, I told you before the podcast. He said, no, nah, don't bring him in. <laughs> um, that man was Jermaine Azarko. Because I just think he's, he's been the best center wing all season. He's Like Spice said, he's been that surprise packet. Um, the Dolphins are not particularly good, but he continues to like score tries, get line breaks. His base is about 50, it seems. So averaging 77, he's, he's a dude that you could bring in this, this sort of round for that extra number and to hold on to. <coughs> but, yeah, I'm, I'm tossing it up now. I think I've already got four Sharks players. We know the Sharks have a good draw. I know that for sure. So I've got four of them. I don't have Ronaldo Mulatalo. So I think with the, with the matchup against the Tigers this week, I have to bring in Mulatalo. <coughs> so he's come into my plans. But, yeah, I've, I've gone from 14 to 10 players just, just based on the team list. So I think I'm going to just – because I've only got 10 trades left. It's not that many. So the two trades I have to use, or one of them at least, has to be for a keeper. So that's kind of where I'm at. That's where I'm thinking. So you're definitely leaning more towards a keeper rather than yeah. just an extra number it's, for this round. It's going to be Mulatalo or Azarko. Just on Asako, worth noting he has uh, the buy. No, Penrith, Penrith and the buy after buy, this, yeah. but then has a real hot run. So maybe you could grab him post My only issue Penrith is buy. with him is that he's just owned by everyone. Yeah. Mm. So it's like... I'm death riding him this week, but am I really getting that much value bringing him in? Is he going to be the, like in the top four scoring centre wing for the run home? I'm banking, if I buy him, I'm banking that he is going to be. Otherwise, It's I'm a defensive play from you for, play. for an attacking fella, but I get it. But yeah. I think my thoughts are I just wouldn't even bother until at least after that Penrith and the buy. Mm. Then you might be able to have a look. And if you have six or seven trades, you, I'm you just know, scared you know of him what? this week. He could go 150. Yeah, who are they playing again? I've totally Gold forgotten. Gold Coast, Gold Coast. Or on the sea bus. Yeah, it's, that's warranted. Yeah. <laughs> so, Spite, same question to you. Looking at your strategy for the run home, your focus for this week, are you thinking more about numbers for 19 or <coughs> are you aiming purely for keepers for this point forward? It's mostly keepers. I'm lucky in that – I wouldn't say lucky. I've planned pretty well for this. I've got – I've actually got 14 players for the week, which is great. Um, put it like this, I've got 11 trades up the sleeve as we, as we chat now. I need to make four in order to get Cleary for feeder, one downgrade to do that, and then I want to get Harry Grant in for Damian Cook. Given I'm a Sonny Luke owner, I can't just run with Cook with his two upcoming buys. So that leaves me with seven trades. I don't want to just be throwing away trades with seven left, even though that'll be the bulk of my side made up outside of someone like Luttrell. I'd be a little bit tentative to use any more than that if you're in, for example, my situation or worse off. So... If I had 10 players, for example, let's make it hypothetical. I've got, so I've got 10 at the moment. I would use at least one to get to 11. Would I use two? Well, one could be Munro as a downgrade. Then you could maybe use one more to get yourself to 12 players um, and get someone like a, you know, a Teague Wilton or someone who plays for the Sharks, doesn't have buys. I'd be happy to then re run with 12 and sort of leave me with that six instead of seven trades in a week or so. Would I need to chase 13? Only if you get someone that you really trust and you really like. And there's probably a little bit of a lack of options this week. So I think that's probably where I'm at, boys, in that situation. You still want to get your numbers if you can, but it's still a long way home and you're probably going to need, need trades in the back end there. Just reflecting on this weekend that's just <coughs> passed, and as I said, it was 12 tonnes scored against those bottom three teams in the Dragons, the Bulldogs and the Tigers. Given that we're regularly <coughs> now seeing guys go above that 120 mark, those 150s and a, and a couple of 170s and a 180, do you think it's viable to be doing short-term plays instead of bringing in keepers <coughs> if you can find a match-up where the team is playing one of those sides two weeks in a row? I do now. If you've um, got the trades left, yeah. you can, yeah. yeah. And that's why I say in those couple trades, of trades. Though, it's, it's a bit difficult. Like it, you were saying, yep. bring it, you're bringing in Cleary and Fafita and you're only counting that as two trades so you can get them both without... I'd, be, I'd have to get Munro as well, so it's okay. three. And right. then I've got my Harry Grant situation, so that's four. So you've got to look at your hookers. Who you want to get back is the big question. But then keeping those trades up sleeve, I think you're about to say, was sure you might grab, grab 50, 60 points this week, which I think could be really handy. But if you're too low on trades, that'll avoid the opportunity to then go, oh, I've got an opportunity here for a bloke who might go 130, 130 back-to-back -back with a hot draw, uh, which could 
be a dagger if you're then not in a position to do that because you've burned all your trades. So I think it's, it's a fine balancing act, as it always is. But, Desi, do you think you're better off, back to Maxi's question, sort of just saving a couple of, but let's call them bonus trades, outside your trades that you probably need for injuries and suspensions and the like to target those short-term runs? See, that's, that's where I'm tossing up. It's like whether I prioritise for feeder and Cleary, who are just, they're the best. They're yep. the best two players in the comp, really, besides Hines. Or do you target guys who could go 150? <coughs> well, okay. It's, this is you prioritise? I strongly think for feeder and Cleary are must-haves. Feeder's gone, I think, five tons in a row in his last five starting games, or six, something crazy. So he's got to lock him in. Cleary comes back to the Dolphins and the Dogs. So straight away, you get Cleary and a hot run. So that's two you must have. Then from there, you can work on, okay, do I have the trades then to have a look at some of the other guys that probably Max will talk about soon? Uh, but I think you have to prioritise for feeder Cleary initially and then see what you can do. Something I wanted to call out on this pod is something that we were speaking about just before the show that... Planning for round 19 is all well and good, and that's what we're here to talk about today, but we've still got the round 20 by um, with three seemingly <coughs> relevant teams as well, which is going to be a bit of a banana peel for some clubs. So in round 20 on the buy, we've got the Rabbitohs, who guys like Cody Walker, AJ, um, Richard Kenner, Damian Cook, all going to be highly owned. Also got Canberra Raiders, um, Tarpany, Horsburgh, um, these types all on the buy, um, and St George. So any Jack de Bellin owners out there, um, if they're still there, on the buy. Um, I know personally that my moves in round 19 are going to be more focused on making sure that I can get a decent 17 on the field for 20, um, rather than be playing 15 blokes next round, which is where I'm in trouble. Um, would you be making any moves this week to try and <coughs> proof yourself against outs? For next week's buy. Absolutely, and I am. Um, I think I'm preemptively going to go, as mentioned, Damien Cook to Harry Grant. Yes, he could get hurt or something origin, but I, if I can get Harry to lock in my hooker for round 20, that allow me to get Fafita and Cleary. I think it's worth that little gamble. Um, so, yeah, I'm happy to go preemptively. Just before you go to Desi on that question, I forgot to mention that it's really important. The reason I say it's becoming more important to target runs now is because defences up until probably the last week or two have been pretty resilient this season. The t comp's been close, but all of a sudden you're seeing younger sides getting blown apart. That often might happen in the last four or five rounds. It's like nine to go, boys. So if it gets worse, you're going to want to be targeting key guys in in opposition teams who play them. So I think just given the context, the whole landscape has changed probably earlier than I expected, which is what's hurt me a little bit. It's just you've seen blokes just blowing up early, um, not just in the last month. So, yeah, I don't know where I got up to there, but key. <laughs> <laughs> I think with that in mind, looking at runs, is there anyone that you've got in mind that you think is a must-own this week if you don't have one, Desi? A must-own? Ah... Uh. It's, it's a tough one. I'm leaning towards Mulatolo. I really am. We know that he's been... He's, he's very super coach relevant. He plays in a shark side that absolutely throttles anyone in the bottom eight. And he just hasn't... He hasn't gone over for like a, a hat-trick this season, which is just insane for Mulatolo. It is it's, insane. It's, it's due. It has to happen. It might happen two weeks in a row, is what I'm saying. He's got a brand new right winger that'll be running out this week, given uh, nofaluma has been given the flick. Um, I'm sure the, the Sharks will be keen to make Nico look as good as possible again and make the mm. New South Wales Blues selectors look silly. So, yeah, it, it could be this week. He's almost certainly coming in for me. <clears throat> I'll, I've actually got a red-hot scenario for you it's based around that chat. I was looking at going Eli Katoa, who's out for a few more weeks, which is frustrating, to Teague Wilton. Similar price. I'm not using money. It just locks up an extra number for this week and next week. Two really tricky rounds. And I really like Teague. Or do I risk that I can potentially cover it without Teague in order to save that one trade, which might net me a double 160 later in the season? It's a balancing act. I don't really know the answer. I might end up playing one short this week and next week if I don't do it. So it's like you might have to the roll, roll the dice a little bit. I'm probably leaning towards I need Teague at this stage, but it's just a scenario I have, which is probably relevant to a lot of people. Absolutely. Boys, moving on from chatting about round 19, wanted to touch briefly on the uh, probably conversation that's been going around for the last three or four weeks about the best 
fullback options that are available. And I'd also just love to also touch on the five eights within this scenario because I'm, I'm seeing a lot of correlation between the good five eights and the good fullbacks at the moment. Feels like this season the picture has been pretty unclear. At times, the best fullback has been Turbo. We've had Teddy put his hand up a couple of weeks in a row with 118s. Gutherson's gone big back to back to back, but is now <coughs> missing games through state of origin. Are we getting any clearer to figuring out who the best two fullbacks are going to be? Desi, what are you thinking at the moment? I'm thinking Scott Drinkwater is, it, is the best fullback in the comp right now by a country mile. Like, he's, he's just looking unbelievable. His speed to get around defences, just, he just runs to the side, runs around the centre, and he's through almost every single time. Um, <laughs> but he's 992k. <laughs> That's your problem. How much would you pay for him? How much would you pay for him? <laughs> um, if you told me last week, I would have said I would pay 900k for him. Yeah. But 992k, it's just too much for <coughs> any single player. Especially a player like Drinkwater who relies on attacking stats. He does at the end of the day. He's probably only going to base 40, 50 if he doesn't score a try or set one up. Oh, not even that, eh? Yeah. I reckon. Sometimes yeah, he like can get like 20, 10 30, points. Yeah. He can get 10 points. We saw it earlier in the season. But the Cowboys are just looking like decimating teams right now. They really are. I'd say if I was stacked with cash, like really stacked, I'd happily pay it. The issue is you'll find most sides probably are then giving up one or both of Cleary and Fafita in order to pay a million dollars for drinky. That's where the issue comes in. Not so much is he worth it. He probably will keep scoring massive, but can you give up those boys? Looking at his draw, after the State of Origin round, the Cows play at Manly at uh, Four Pines Park. Then they've got Parramatta uh, at home up in Townsville and then the Titans away. So three pretty good games. Uh, and a guy who's also seeming to come on with his good form has been Tom Dearden. 179 um, on the weekend, looked like a future immortal. Is he joining the conversation for players that you need to consider within your 5 eighth? And keep in mind that right now he's 770 grand. <laughs> he's probably just in the range you could grab him. But look, I said this last week. Two people reached out to me on Twitter. It's a public apology, by the way. And I said I couldn't buy Dearden based on pedigree. Even last season, I think he averaged 53 or something. I know he's a year older and getting better, obviously, and stronger and quicker. But if you're going to pay a lot of money... For a bloke that's pedigree is that. I didn't want to do it. Then all of a sudden he went bang and lobbed out 180 odd. But look, that decimation was as bad as we've seen for a while. That can't be the norm. Is that an anomaly, would you say? Uh, that's definitely an anomaly. Uh, maybe not for... Put it like this. If they were playing the dogs this weekend and then the tigers again, you might say, okay, it's possible. But, I mean, the, the run you just mentioned, I can't see them putting on 66 or 70 against them. I'm not saying did and can't do well. well last week before the 170, <coughs> he scored a 90. And the week before that, he scored 118. Yeah, so he, he's certainly in the ballpark and maybe it's a little pod play. Uh, at that price, he's still in the ballpark of being able to do it. But you'd have to get rid of a gun probably to do it. So I'm probably leaning no, but man, compared to last week, it's it's sort of a new world a little bit on the in the di in front. Desi, you mentioned drink water. Who's your other fullback if money was no issue right now for the run home? Um, I think it's Latrell. As soon as Latrell's back, you grab him. Um, I, I started with Latrell. He he looks solid. Just <coughs> assuming that he comes back the same way that he left, I think it's him. He was averaging you know 85 odd, 80 odd, so. I think it's him, but Gutho, Gutho also has to be in consideration. He's scored three, three big tons in a row, 120, 130 in a row. And the Eels draw is not that bad, is it? It's, it's pretty solid. So, yeah. so when he comes back nice. after Origin, he will be playing the Titans uh, at home at Combank Stadium. Then he's away to the North Queensland Cowboys. Use your fast deck up there, plenty of points. For me, the move that I'm looking off over the Gutherson owner will be flipping in round 22 when the Eels come up against the Melbourne Storm in Marvel, albeit they seem to always turn up against Marvel, uh, to Luttrell in round 22, provided he's back when they take on the Tigers in Tamworth. And then the Rabbits have got four pretty strong games then um, from round 22 against the Tigers, the Sharks, the Dragons, uh, and then the Knights as well. Whoa, uh, juicy. Okay, Luttrell, Luttrell's, coming Luttrell's in. in. Yeah, so mark that one in your little book. Luttrell, <laughs> round 22. Uh, and to the boys in the salary sombrero who I will be defeating this year in head-to-head -head finals, 
you've been warned officially. So on notice. They're on, on notice. notice. Spy, we've heard just heard two <coughs> names there from Desi in terms of the fullbacks, or three names rather, in Drinkwater, Luttrell, Gutherson. Is there anyone else in the conversation for you at the moment for the fullback that you want to have for the run home? I think KP has to be in the discussion. He just, you know, we were concerned about head knocks, rightly so, but he seems to be playing with confidence and just staying on the park, which is great. He's back to his best. Still comes with risk that he could get a head knock at any point, but the longer and longer it goes on with this form and with, with games to come against the Tigers, the Dolphins, the Doggies again, St George and the run home, I'm finding it really hard to miss him. And gee, it hurts, because not only did I miss the 180-odd last week, I now have to pay about 150 more thousand dollars for him. So, But I think he's looking pretty crucial. Maybe like a KP Luttrell scenario could be ideal. Uh, a light would drinky. Would you put him at 5'8"? Oh, yeah, you probably would, wouldn't you? Yeah, you Sliding wouldn't, down you wouldn't five, put Ponga at fullback. It's, it's not worth it. Yeah, because you don't need to. Yeah, you don't need to. You're right there. Good call. Um, drinky, obviously, but at that price, I've already mentioned my concerns there and the ramifications. Reese Walsh doesn't have the best run home when he's back, but he's capable... Dylan Edwards, I don't mind, especially from round 20, the Dolphins-Bulldogs match. So he's one to look at as well. I've currently got a Sarko and Garrick. I mean, that's that's fine. They're doing a job and I don't mind them. But yeah, there are some, some options out there, no doubt. So uh, that's it, I think, on the fullback chat from us. I think what I'm finding most interesting right now, however, is we're talking about a lot of guys who aren't available in round 19. Uh, and with the exception of Luttrell, who has the buy in round 20 and back in 21, um, these, like, these, we could potentially um, not have any good fullbacks this round. Desi, Spy, Spy, I'll start with you. Would you go early on any of these guys in round 19, knowing that in round 20... <coughs> We're most likely going to get a Nathan Cleary halfback up against the Dolphins, where David Fafida, post-Origin, um, is, is going to be a big want. With Damien Cook on the buy, Harry Grant as well. With so many buys, would you go early on a drink water or a Ponga this week at fullback? Yeah, I'm happy to go early on one person this week. Uh, don't mind doing it all. Fafida, you might find if he plays a, a good strong 80 next Wednesday, could be due for a little spell before the run home. So you could probably get away with not getting Fafita that week. It is risky, but I can't see him playing. If he plays 70 or 80 for the Maroons, I can't see him then playing 70 or 80 for the Titans, I wouldn't think, a couple of days later, but I could be wrong. Uh, but yeah, that's your question. I'd be happy to go early and will go early on someone this week to set myself up. Dizzy? No, no <laughs> chance. Spy's only saying that because he's got the numbers this week. You, you have to take the numbers in front of you while you can. If, you, if you're down on numbers this week, focus on this week. One week at a time. I think next week you just have to roll the dice and hope that players back up. But if you if you got the point the the players this week, you know, you're guaranteeing yourself an extra sixty, seventy points, um, you may as well take the points this week. I'm under the assumption though that say say you're a bit short and you use two trades for this week and then you've just got your third sitting there. You're not using it. That's when I'd do it. I'm happy to go, okay, let's preemptively strike get someone in in order to get me to double strike again the week after. Obviously, it's where boosts come in if you've got that boost handy. Um, Timmy Williams looking pretty good right now with that boost, of course. It's always going to be handy, but it, it just means you have to think a little bit more and get proactive if you don't have that boost. But you have to make sure that the person you're bringing in next week plays or backs up after Origin because we know they're the best players, right? Yep. So you've got to bring in almost a non-Origin player who you think is going to be a keeper for the run home, and there's not that many of them. Ponga. Ponga. Drink water. That's about it. Yeah, yeah. There are a few options. <laughs> but the two guys. Like, that, in so much money on a week like this, where you're going to need to use it well. But if you can use a trade this week to nuff, and going in your CTW, for example, from a Taruva down to a Tyrone Munro is going to make you three hundred thousand dollars. That's a way to turn a guy like a, a, a good CTW into a drink water potentially. Yeah. yeah. There's a options. Million bucks for drink water. Is he worth a mill? I'm. St I'm still not convinced. I won't be buying him for that. Yeah. I can't wait to have this chat about Wish I the own. trades next week as well because I think that the trades in round 20 are going to be absolutely mental with the amount of guns that everyone's going to want to bring back into their team. It's going to be a crazy wait next week. Oh, strap in. Yeah. Boys, let's have a chat about head-to-head. -head. Now, this year, as the story went, I told this on the podcast in round 13 when I was here. It was about round six when I decided that the 50K was out of reach. Desi, you got to, <laughs> I know it must be nice when you can claim the top prize, yeah. but I knew it wasn't for me and my focus turned to head-to-head. -to -head. 
Uh, so far in my league, despite all my best efforts and my focus, I'm winning a, winning a lot more games than I have been since I turned my focus to head-to-head. But I'm still on the outside of the eight looking in. Uh, but we wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about head-to-head finals that are coming up this year. Uh, and this conversation is going to be based around the head-to-head finals for most leagues, which are happening between round 23 and 26. So for head-to-head players, the way that I'm thinking about this season at the moment is that you're either in one of two camps. You're either firmly entrenched in your top eight and locked into a spot in the finals, or you're <coughs> really hardly ch- uh, you're chasing a spot in those finals. And to help with this discussion, what I've done is really broken the draw into two different chunks so you can have a think about your potential trades over this next portion of time and the types of guys that you're going to want to have in your team in this period. So what I'd love to do with you, Spy and Des, I know you guys are definitely focusing more on overall. I'm going to read you out a couple of draws that are happening in this time and I'd love to get the names of a few players that you might look to target in this time. Uh, And I'm going to finish by giving you two names in particular that I think are going to be crucial trade-ins in round 20 or even round 19 um, for any teams coming in there. So Before you give them to me, mate, I nearly burst into cold chisel then when you said standing on the outside looking in. <laughs> <laughs> mate, you're welcome to any time. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what a, a, a couple of drinks will do for you. That's it's a it. shame that you're on the tees today, mate. <laughs> Next Tuesday, I'll be back, mate. Well, let's have a look at the draw from round 19 to 22. So this would be really the moving period. So if you're outside the eight, you need wins, then you'll be looking at the teams with the best matchups, uh, trying to figure out where you might be able to find a pod who can be a great point of difference. So looking at the draws, the best teams in this time, the Tigers. They've got Cronulla, Knights and George and Souths, although they are still the Tigers, unfortunately for me. <laughs> Uh, the Dragons, they've got Canberra, the buy in 20, then they've got the Tigers and Manly. And again, it's a shame that they're actually the Dragons. The two teams, I think, have got really nice draws in this period. They've got the round 19 <coughs> buy, but in round 20, the Cowboys, they played Manly uh, away, Parramatta at home, and the Titans away as well. And the Panthers, at the buy in round 19, they've got the Dolphins away with the expected return of Nathan Cleary. They've got the Bulldogs at home in round 21, which could be... One of the biggest scores of oh all time. Yeah, it's not good. And then they've got Cronulla at home <coughs> in round 20. Again, Cronulla haven't been the biggest defensive stalwarts. Looking at the teams with a tough draw during this period, not as relevant when it comes to super coach circles at the moment, but the Gold Coast Titans, the Dolphins at home in round 19, which is pretty good. Then they come up against Parramatta, the Sydney Roosters and the North Queensland Cowboys. The Bulldogs, they've got the Souths in the bye, and then they go into Brisbane, Penrith, and the Dolphins as well. So let's start with the good teams, the Cowboys <coughs> and the Panthers. The Panthers, Desi Creek, goes without saying, but the number one most traded in target for people chasing wins in that round 19 or 20 period, it's got to be Nathan Cleary. You'd think so. On the surface, um, we know he's the best player in Supercoach. He has been for the last few years. Um, but it's, he's coming back from injury. It's always like a, it's an iffy one. He's, it's a hamstring injury, which we were saying, if he returns, he returns fine. Or he pulls his hamstring. We've seen Turbo do it before. He might just be a little bit tentative. Um, but yeah, he's, he's got <laughs> two very easy games in a row. So you would expect that he can still, um, he can still go massive, provided that he has the goal kicking. He might not have the kicking. That's one thing to also consider. It is a factor. They, they might, they might uh, opt to go with Crichton still. So you just you never know. But I, I would say, yes, get Nathan Cleary <laughs> back in. He's the number one target, despite all that. Certainly a move on my <laughs> mind at the moment. Looking over at the Cowboys, looking at that run from round 20, Manly away, Parramatta uh, at home up in Townsville and the Titans away. Spy, any interest in you from the Cows? And is there anyone in particular that has caught your eye? You brush Penrith pretty quick, mate. <laughs> well, outside, outside of Cleary, is there anyone else that really catches your attention? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say... Stephen Crichton with the goal kicking. Um, I was at Tungo, obviously. He's looked very dominated good. Dominated last week. He's yeah. been pretty good all year. With that run on that left edge. <laughs> um, still at a reasonable price as well. Same as Dylan Edwards. I like them both. If there's a way I can squeeze one of them, probably won't be both, but one of them in, I'd probably like to do that. Uh, so have a look at that. In terms of the Cowboys... We've spoken about Drinky. Valentine Holmes with a good run. He's playing with confidence. He's blown out as well. Like, the issue with missing those big scores is you then can't afford him a few weeks later. So it's a double-edged sword. But, yeah, he's going to do well. 
Nanai's work rate. His uh, his Being work good. rate is up, which good, just yeah. it just ups everything. His floor gets bigger, his ceiling gets bigger. Six fourteen k. Don't mind Nanai as a little shout. I haven't actually looked at his numbers as such, just more how he's been playing. I know he's been a lot busier taking hit ups. If he's busy, points are going to follow. So yeah, Jeremiah and Nanai just going through them as we speak. Um, outside of that, they're probably my main ones from the Cowboys, mate. Jeremiah and Nana, three round average of 91 and a break even of nine uh, coming up against with that good run. Um, could be a real point of difference. Um, I know I told you blokes a name off air as well. I'm going to save that until the end of my little spiel. <laughs> uh, jumping ahead now, looking at the finals, round 23 to 26. And I think this is where the movers and the shakers and those who are firmly entrenched in the top eight, this might be where you're targeting guys over the next couple of weeks waiting for when they're at their cheapest or maybe even just using your trades to get ahead of the game. Now, the number one team with the best draw in round 23 and 26 for head-to-head finals, the New Zealand Warriors. They have in round 23 the Gold Coast Titans into the Tigers in New Zealand, into Manly in New Zealand, into the Dragons in New Zealand, and they finish off in round 27 away to the Dolphins. Most leagues will be done by 27, but geez. <laughs> That's a hell of a run, Desi Creek. Anyone who tempts you uh, with that run? Yeah, I mean, I've I've been looking deeply into getting CNK. I mean, he was he was my golden child in 2019. I started with him. I held him the entire way through. So I just love him. He's got super high work rate. And what's good is he looks like he's passing the ball a bit more in the attacking 10 this year. So that, that week he got 150 two weeks ago. He had four <coughs> try assists, which is unheard of for CNK. He, he never produced anything like that before. So, I mean, it's really good to see. He's, he's still taking 20-plus runs a game. Mm. He just takes it. He tucks the, he tucks the rock, gets tackle boss here and there. He's 770K, I believe, which is probably where he should be priced with that sort of draw. <coughs> but, yeah, I probably wouldn't bring him in until round 23. Um, and obviously the other one is DWZ, yep. who Spy said – a few a few months ago, I believe, mm. was was a good option. Um, he scored twenty or so last week, but I think you can disregard that game. It was a uh, pretty pretty torrid conditions. So he's the other one who's also seven uh, seven hundred and something k. So it's, a, it's quite a lot to pay, but <coughs> you got to find the pod somewhere. And DWZ is still a pod, I believe. So I think on the Warriors boys after last week shellacking in the wet. If you have a look at their run, if you can get by without them this week, they then have Sharkies into Canberra, then the bye. So you might be able to just jump on round 23 at a far reduced rate. That's what I think they'll become hot property. And that's where we talk about just saving that one sneaky trade could come in handy just to grab that pod. Like if DWZ, for example, is coming off a 20, he could potentially drop 150k before then and you can scoop him up. So just worth noting. Looking at a few other teams with incredible draws for round 23, and thankfully there's quite a lot of them. Uh, the Dolphins, they've got the Knights, Roosters, Tigers, and the Cowboys. The Sharks have got the Rabbits, the Titans, the Cowboys, the Knights. The Knights have got the Dolphins, the Bulldogs, South Sydney, and Cronulla, so that's great news for KP owners or even Dane Gagai owners in that period. The <laughs> Roosters runs immaculate. They've got Manly, the Dolphins, Parramatta, and the Tigers in your head-to-head final in round 26. And even the Storm, if you can get past round 23 against Penrith, they come up against Canberra Raiders, the St George Dragons, and the Titans in that home final. Uh, I aim to get an article up on the website with a bit more detail on this run um, and going into a few of these teams as well on the website later this week. So you can start to think about those players that you want to target for your head-to-head finals. Um, But if you've got any comments, any pods that you want to chuck, chuck them in the comments on YouTube as well because we'd love to get your thoughts. Now, I promised earlier, just having a look at this little run from 19 to 22, if you're a player like me on the outside looking in, uh, a couple of players that have really, really caught my eye that I'd love to get your thoughts on, lads. Um, The first one, and having a look at this draw from round 20. So my league doesn't play in round 19, which is absolutely amazing. I actually get to spend some time with the missus. (laughs) Shout out. She'll be watching this later on. Uh, Looking at this team. So they play in round 20. Just find it on my list there. Okay, so the Dolphins away. This is a left centre coming up against a team who just conceded two tries to Herbie Farnworth uh, from their right centre. They came up against the Bulldogs in round 21. 
where the left centre this week scored 150. Any guesses spy on who I'm talking about? You totally lost me there on who we're talking about. What we're talking about a team playing the Dolphins in yep. round 20 and round 21 at left centre. We're talking about Isaac Tungo. Oh, he's flying, isn't he? Yeah. He's looking good. He's of interest. 660k, coming off a big score of 118 this week. Had a couple of tries, tackle busting. I think his name was spoken about in terms of origin circles. But thankfully for um, super coaches, he's going to be available. So he gets the buy, rest up, coming back strong. Could you buy him Desi Creek in round 20 with that runner game? He's coming up against the Dolphins, the Bulldogs and Cronulla. Let me check how much he is. 660k. 660k. He's, yeah, he's about fairly priced, I'd say. Um, you could do it. You could. I probably won't do it. I just I think he doesn't pass enough. Almost like he he takes seems to be pretty good for super coach. Yeah, yeah, that's it what is, I want. It is good, yeah. but he also he loses out on a few try assists as well if he takes the line on. Sometimes when he can't get over himself, he's losing out of it. You're really relying on him to go on a tackle busting tear essentially, mm. and he's had a few lucky a, a lucky try assist last week. The kick to Hosking, just stuff has been going his way the last few weeks. <coughs> Um, will it continue to go his way? Maybe. It could happen. Two what? So, <coughs> we're just rephrasing that. If you're looking at him for a three-week run, three week run what, how many points would you be happy with trading him in for? At 660K, I think you want 85 a week from a centre wing. At that, at that stage in the season, if you're going to waste a trade, or it's not wasting a trade, but if you're going to take a punt on someone, you want them at that 85 average, which is you know, 20, 20 above what a centre wing keeper would normally score. Who's their third game after those? Cronulla. Cronulla. Yep. And their yeah. weak edge is on the opposite side of the field, but still it's the Penny Panthers. They could be absolutely humming by this team and yeah. putting sides to the sword. I think the beauty of Isaac is you get him, you're keeping him. You're not then going to sell him after you're happy to own him. So I think that's a lot of the appeal for me. I'll give you one more name as well. And this is a side who has a run of Manly, Parramatta and Titans. And Spy, I'll play this little game with you. Where do Manly concede their tries? On the edges, mate. Down Everywhere. the right edge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Although I'm, ho- I'm thinking Manly, Jakey's back. Don't underestimate that. He doesn't, like, he yeah. doesn't defend on the wing, though, unfortunately. He just helps everyone. He just helps everyone. We saw on the weekend how much better they were with him. But, yeah, right edge, come at me. What do you got? Paramount. Oh, sorry, their left edge, I should say. Well, yeah. they concede a lot down the right. I'll give you the hot tip, man. Yeah. Parramatta, where do they concede their tries? Out wide. Right edge. Yeah. Where do the Titans concede their tries? That, I don't want to answer that with Titans <laughs> fans listening. <laughs> right edge. <laughs> which player, which left winger is coming up against those three teams in a row from round 20? No, I barely know what day it is rather than ask me. He's coming question. off a 140. Yeah. He's coming yeah. off a 140. <laughs> yeah. Now you guys tell me. I big, can't even concentrate. <laughs> big Murray Tower Lungy. Yeah, big Murray. Another guy who's grown a foot since going into Queensland origin camp. Uh, th- that did and double cutout ball just seems to be a thing Ooh. these days. Um, he's about 570k. He's going to have that 140 in his rolling average. And you've got to think if the cows are scoring bulk tries with a pretty decent run, chock full of confidence at the moment that Murray's going to be on the end of a lot of those ones. Spy any interest in Murray Tower Lungy? It's definitely interest, but there was interest last year for me and I bought him. He barely scored a point for like a month. So I'm pretty, pretty burnt by him. I think the issue is... A little bit like Penrith, Valentine Holmes gets a lot of quality footy and he's just good enough just to go straight through and score. Yeah. So it doesn't always get to tell Lungy like it would for other sides. So for me, certainly at the price, I think there's nothing wrong with the buy. Um, and he'll probably do a good job for you and surely have a few decent scores in him, but it's not as clear cut as it seems for mine. So since round 14, he scored an 87, a 60, and an 140 against the Tigers. So a three-round average of 95. I also take out the Tigers game. I just, I, like, honestly, it's, I don't think that's relevant to the rest of the season unless you're playing the Tigers again or probably the Dogs as it stands. It's just like, it's so such... Looking like a man with no Cowboys in his team. I <laughs> know, <laughs> right? Boys, let's move on then from our head-to-head section. And this is my favourite part of the show where we get to talk about the boys from SCW. So Pat and George, over the next 12 months, an estimated 60% of all fixed rate mortgages are going to expire, which is absolute madness. This means that for a lot of you out there, you haven't felt the impacts of all the consecutive rate rises that have been dominating the media talk lately. 
And uh, Timmy has taken the time to speak with Pat and George about this in detail and they told him that in a lot of their clients, they still have a rate with a one or two in front of them. The average rate now is around 5%. So what does that mean? Basically, for a lot of people, their mortgage repayments are about to increase an average of 737 bucks a month. And for anything like me, that's a lot of money to find. So if you haven't had a look at when your fixed rate expires or if you're worried about when it does, give the experts Pat and George a call so they can get you at the best rate possible and keep more money in your pockets to put less stress on your finances. And the best part is that you save yourself 129 bucks on a free consult because you're an SC Playbook listener. So mention SC Playbook when you get in contact. And to do so, flick them a message on Instagram at Pat and George Mortgage Choice or give them a call on 02 9521 1611. Boys, let's move on to the hot topics and the most traded in people this week. Number one on the list, Tyrone Munro from the South Sydney Rabbits. He's won that right wing spot. Richie Kennard's nowhere to be seen. Doesn't play the round 20 buy, but Desi Creek, can you get around the Tyrone Munro buy? I think I'm going to have to get him, to be honest. If I want to afford Mulatalo without trading out a keeper, I was, I was initially going to trade out Gutherson, but you kind of talked me into keeping him. I, I still see merit in it. He's 900k. He's got. He's still got a relatively low break even because he's got those tons in his rolling averages. But he just also has that really juicy game in in round 20. Tons so round 20. Yep. So yeah, you probably want to keep him for that. So I think yeah, Monroe's the go when you've got someone like Kenner who you need to flick. You may as well just do it. Go straight to him. Um, if he continues to play, that's fine. If he doesn't, he turns into a pretty solid nuff. It's it's fine either way, but I'm not I'm not expecting a, a big score from him this week. With all the outs at the bunnies, but if he gets fifty odd, happy days. Not going to hurt you. In spots two through to five, we've got members of the <coughs> Cronulla Sharks. Ronaldo Molotalo, second most traded in. Will Kennedy number three. Britton Nicara, I reckon he's in for a huge week against the Tigers at number Absolutely. four. Number seven. Valence Tavare, he's that cheapy who finally turned into the cheapy that we wanted about two weeks ago. Spy, any interest in VTW? <coughs> Maybe a little bit. What's he worth? $356,000 coming he's cheap, off. cheap, seems to have... I wouldn't say seems to have locked a spot in, but I saw that um, Branko Lee is was training today, back healthy. So hard to tell whether he's locked that spot in or Branko's just not being considered for this week. So I don't think I'd probably buy him because you'd definitely buy Munro in front of um, Tafade. But if you own, you're absolutely cheering, eh, for this round. Number eight, most traded in, and this is an interesting one to think about planning ahead, is David Fafita. $828,000. I think all that money that we thought he was going to lose with that huge break even didn't end up being that much. And now people are getting back on, uh, I guess, with a view towards round 20. The Titans plug back up on the Sunday after State of Origin Game 3. Um, and they're playing in Sydney as well, so there won't be any travel for the big fella. Desi, can you get around the David for fee to purchase this week? No, I can't. I think it's I think it's a weird purchase. Like Spy said, they could easily rest him, even though they play on the Sunday. And we saw last time he came on off the bench, and he scored about twenty points, mm -hmm. fifteen points. It could easy happen again. Um, I just don't see why you you need to bring him in early. You just don't need to. You could you may as well <coughs> wait and see. It's Seems just it's a lot of money to pay. He's not going to go up or down in price. I don't know why people are rushing. Were you encouraged by the uh, only 49 minutes that he played in Origin 2, though, that he's more of a chance of turning out at NRL that weekend? I don't know. Hol Holbrook's weird. Oh, he's gone now, so... <laughs> he's gone, <laughs> I was yeah. going to say. Uh, yeah, well, he might be backing up now. Now that Holbrook's not <coughs> there, you never know. I don't hate it, boys. Uh, the reason being, I didn't quite realise it was a Sunday match in Sydney. That helps a lot in terms of backing up. Just probably depends on his minutes in origin, which we won't know. You've obviously got to make that call before the game. Uh, if it's a preemptive strike in order to get yourself ready for a couple of trades you think you're going to need in round 20, I don't hate it. Um, but only if you have to is the answer. Spine, I want to get your thoughts on the most traded out, the top 10 this week. Number two at the moment, your man from the West Tigers, or our West Tigers, Jareem, the dream buller. Is the dream over, Spy? <coughs> Could you get around trading him out this week? I think I have to. Uh, really, unfortunately, I just can't afford to see him bust out another 40 or 50, which would be a fine score, an OK score on a buy round, but I think he'd then lose another 90K and make him very tricky to sell 
moving forward. Now, I know the Tigers draw opens up a little bit again, so I'm questioning whether he might get back to some form if they get a little bit of confidence. I wouldn't do it. I would not trade him out against the Sharks. <laughs> they they leak points, the Sharks. They'll put on points. It could be like a, a 50 to 20 type of scoreline. And if, if the Tigers get 20-odd points, <coughs> you'd expect Bull is going to be in there somewhere. Are you happy to keep him for the year, though? Because no, not for the year. Yeah, you have to, though. Just consider if you own him, you probably have to keep him for the year. What's his break? Why, why who, do you have to? Who are you going to get? Once you buy your Fafida and Clearies and those guys, and Buller gets down to potentially 550, where do you go from there? Break time, to, of time to bring in an off. This week. Bring in an off. Mm. It's Risky. a lot of money. 151 break even this week, so he could be under, under 600K this yeah, week. Yeah, and you don't have enough easy. fullback. You have to swing up a centre. I don't think it just limits your fullback options. I'd love to bloody keep him, to be honest. Be handy, but like KP. I think you'll get burnt if you sell him. Uh, honestly, I can go to KP for not a whole lot more at the moment. About 100, mm. 110, 120k. Yeah, don't mind that. If you can do that, then yeah. Yeah. If you, yeah. We're it's a real tricky one. That price yeah. and break even plummeting has hurt so badly. Just needed one more decent score in the last two weeks. They could have happily held through the week, seeing how they looked, see if they bounce back. But I think it's a massive gamble. And I've laid out my trade plans for the next couple of weeks. If he loses 80, 90, 100K, puts a massive hole in that. We'll get yeah. to that shortly, Spy. Uh, and number six on the list, Nick Meany. Now, he was a pretty popular purchase for the last buy round, but he's really hit the skids of late for the Melbourne Storm. They're not playing this buy. He's only worth 560K. I think people were paying almost 700 for him. Um, thankfully, I've avoided that. Desi, any thoughts on Meany? Is he worth holding, knowing that the Storm have actually got a decent draw to, to finish the end of the season? Yeah, I think so. He's got the goal kicking. That, that's, that pretty much settles it for me. At 560k, I'd be looking to bring him in rather than trade him out. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I think he'll have a good end of season. Yeah. Meany's, Meany's on my radar for sure. The yeah. more who trade him out, the better. Yeah. Looking at that draw, round 20, they've got the Roosters, then into the Knights in round 21, Parramatta, uh, and then Penrith in round 23. But after that, they finish with Canberra, St. George, Titans, Brisbane. If there's any hint of Pappenhausen um, in and around the team, you think he's a sell, but I just don't expect There's definitely a hint, though, year. last week that he's sort of I back running. So by the time that – that changes a little bit for me in that by the time that draw really opens up after Penrith, maybe Pappy's back. And even if he's back from the bench, that could potentially cut into Meany's minutes, though. Surely he stays on the field and goes to the wing. So I think so. Yeah, but then goal kicking gets questioned. I still like him as a buy. I don't think I'll be selling him, not at that price. Uh, but just, that's just one to monitor, at least, moving forward. And the 10th most traded out a very interesting one this week, but it's Campbell Graham. So he was a guy uh, who shone so brightly at the start of this season and his average is still one of the best uh, in CTW, but that sternum injury just doesn't seem to be going away and he's missing uh, regular games at the moment. Desi, if you owned Campbell Graham, what would you be doing? I'd probably sell him at that price. I, I don't mind the sell. He had a very good season. Like, it's, it's above par, you know. Um, to think that he's going to continue doing that, maybe he does, but he's, he plays in a position where it's high volatility of the points. He, might, he, he, could, have easy, he could easily have games where he just scores three forties in a row, even despite the draw, you know, they could just be going to the other side of the field. So the fact that he doesn't play this week, he costs that much money. I think it's a fair enough sell. Mm, I, certainly I can one get I'm around it for round 22. Is What's he worth? Buy. 660. Yeah. So there's still value there, isn't there? Mm. To get rid of him. Could jump to an Azarko for not much money <laughs> this week, which would be interesting. Or, yeah. Even Munro. Yeah. 200, mm. 240k made and ready to rumble. I don't mind as a hold either, to be fair, because after the buy, he probably returns and they're probably just managing him. People are just scrambling for numbers. Round issue for Souths. Yeah. So if you, you're going to miss him until round 21 at least. Yeah. Which is a shame. That's the question. Definitely. Can you hold till then? Well, boys, the ESC Playbook Podcast has partnered with Better this year for the 2023 NRL season. Follow SC Playbook socials throughout the season for our weekly NRL fantasy markets. And just remember, what's gambling really costing you? For free and confidential support, call 1-800-858-858 or visit gamblinghelponline.org.au and stay tuned to our social channels uh, for the rest of this week where we'll put up those exclusive markets. Let's get on to the round 19 trade and skipper plans. Spy, I'll start with you, mate. What are your trades for this week? Well, I'm just changing them as we speak. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> initially I had... Uh, 
Buller down to Munro. Free up that cash. I can flip Asako back to fullback. Damien Cook to Harry Grant. That's more of a need just to set me up for round 20 when I go bang, bang with Cleary and likely for feeder, depending on his minutes. I just want to be in a position where I'm flexible. So I'm going to take the punt. And I know I'm going to need Harry. Um, pending health, I just need him to play the rest of the season. Then Sonny Luke doesn't matter. If Harry gets hurt or something happens, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But there'll be a couple of trades at least up the sleeve handy just in case. And then I also had Ellie Katoa to Teague Wilton just to give me that extra number this week. And next, also I think he's a good keeper at a good price just to run home the rest of the season. What I was just having a look at was KP. I'm finding it really hard to go without him. I really wanted to antipod him. Maybe he gets busted again or a head knock, but their run. And if he's going to be goal kicking, like his goal kicking on the weekend was unbelievable. He didn't look like missing. Technique looks ready to rumble again. Hard to pass up, hey. So West what I'm going to do... Round 20, break even in 19. <coughs> he could be hard to get. I know. <laughs> and like, next week. it could just mean I spend the whole rest of the year going, I'm making up some ground, then KP plays. I'm trying to limit that damage. It's just happened to me too much this year, so I might have to bite the bullet, get KP, who I'd like to own anyway, because I want to I cheer him on. I love KP. So I think for just the enjoyment of the game, I might do that. It could potentially put me in a little bit of damage with regards to getting clear in for feeder from a money perspective. So that's what we talk about. That then means I might not be able to do both those trades. Clearly will happen, that's fine. But maybe after making an extra trade and wait the week on Fafita, which I can probably live with post-origin. That's where I'm at at the moment. But I think KP probably has to come in, which means Teague Wilton probably misses out. But yeah, a little bit to still unfold, boys. Skippers? Skippers, oh, VC Nico and then captain nico because he's gonna go mad <laughs> uh, if something happens there i'll, I'll reassess after okay. the game desi creek your trades for this week i'm gonna go kenna to monroe i think that's the obvious one for me um then the other one i'm i think i'm definitely gonna bring in mulatalo i just i don't want to go without him he's due a hat trick we know he's he averages 67 which is like center wing keeper status anyway can play him on matchups and i'm trading out billy smith for that who I think run his course. And captain, yeah, VC Nico, back up. If he goes down with a hammy, it's going to be Joey Tarpany, I'd say, on those minutes. Rock solid. Yeah, I bought Ronaldo Molotalo in about round seven or eight for 730K. Uh, and even though he's a lot cheaper now, I have not been disappointed. Uh, and I'd certainly be targeting this week. The trades for me at the Dewey, going to be getting rid of Jerome Hughes. He's uh, served his course, made 100 grand, averaged about... Uh, over 65, would have been a lot higher if we went for that 30 last week, and he's going to be turning into Nathan Cleary a week early for me. Still got uh, about 100k for trades. I'll be then going Tyrone Peachy to Max King, uh, and that's just with uh, anticipating uh, a couple of outs next week. My front row at the moment um, is Joseph Tarpany uh, and Corey Horsburgh. Uh, so I'll be moving Tohu, Harris and Max King up there to cover the front row for me next week. Uh, ahead of round 20, and I can deal with the Damien Cook mess uh, next week. And maybe I'll just hope that Sonny Luke doesn't get named and I can run an AE. <coughs> VC, Nico, C will be maybe Jermaine Azarko, but I'm really hoping that I don't have to make that decision. Guys, to wrap up today, we'll get into the listener questions. <coughs> and here's a bit of an interesting one, and I feel that this name came up uh, at around the round 13 by, but Desi, we, we spoke a little bit about it before. This question's from Alex Peckman, and he asked... If you've saved trades so far, is Jermaine Azarko a sell? Uh, last couple of weeks, he's got a 60, he's got a 50. He's got the Titans this week, which is a good matchup. And then <coughs> round 20, he's got the Penrith Panthers, and then he's got the buy. So it would be a way to cash in at him while he's still at relatively peak value and move to the next guy. Desi, what do you reckon? It's, it's madness. <laughs> why, why would you sell him? He's the top scoring center wing all season. He doesn't even look like blanking really he's he scored over 68 rounds in a row which is just unheard of wow. in center wing so what no, if you could move him to one of these fullbacks that we're talking about like a no, i still Ponger. wouldn't do it i still wouldn't do it he's averaging 77 pong is averaging less than that <coughs> can i tell you he's run after the boy canterbury bulldogs newcastle knights roosters west tigers yeah, like, no, it's, it's madness to I sell. think that's the real answer to the that's, question. I'm gonna, I'll answer. be bringing him in. <laughs> and he plays this major week, which yeah. is huge this round, so yeah. No chance. 
Next question from Frankie Crossell. What to do with Cody Walker? Now, I'm going to open up this question, Spy, <coughs> to a few players because there's several who are in this scenario. Mm -hmm. Corey Horsburgh, missing round 19 and round 20. Uh, Gutherson as well, sort of a, an unexpected out at this point. But let's start with the main one with Cody Walker. Missing these next two rounds and knowing how hot the 5'8 position is going at the moment, what, do you, what would you do with him as an owner? A little bit harder to comment just because I don't own him, which obviously has hurt a bit of late. Um, I'd probably check their run home. Yep. I think it's all about the run home. I think that last month you mentioned, the Bunnies have a hot run home. So given trades will run low, why not just keep him, mate? Keep him for that run. He's still going to score well in the interim, you'd expect. Um, certainly I'd, I'd prefer to own him than, than be selling him. So yeah. You an owner, Dizzy? I'm not, no. <laughs> So I am, and I am definitely going to be holding. If I can get through round 20 with him on the bye, he's got Brisbane in 21, which will be pretty tough. But they should get Latrell back for that game. And then it's into the Tigers, Cronulla, St. George, and then the Knights. <coughs> yeah, that's now, magic. With a head-to-head -head focus, the main thing with Cody Walker uh, is making sure that I've got myself a trade that if I'm lucky enough to be there in the round 26 final... I can turn him into someone else and not miss that value. Um, same goes for Damien Cook and Latrell, for that matter. These guys will be really fantastic at getting into that final. Yep. Um, but making sure you've got at least two <coughs> trades left in round 26 is going to be crucial to make sure that you can capitalise on that position they'll get you in. And that's where head-to-head -head sometimes, if you're going well in a league and you've locked up top four or whatever it is that you need to benefit from, you can tank a week if you need to and make no trades. Just lose the week in head-to-head -head and set yourself up with an eye, eye to the finals. Like, it's much like real footy. If you happen to lose a game in round 24, but you finish top of the table, it doesn't matter. As long as you're set for finals. It's the exact same concept. Question from Karts. Looking at a few different pods in 2RF, Cam Murray or Hudson Young, any options as 4th, 5th, 2RF? What do you reckon, Des? It's a tough one. I think both are kind of similar. They... They kind of need to try to get over that 80, 90 mark. I don't mind Hodder. Now that he's missed, uh, he's missed game three here, I think he's almost, a, he's almost a solid trade in this week. We didn't really speak about him much, but I don't mind it. Um, but Murray, he's looking good. He's looking like he's going to score tries and end the season well. Um, you'd, you'd expect the Bunnies end the, end the season pretty bloody well. So I, I'm kind of leaning towards Hudson, though, for some reason. Murray's about 460k, so I think well, it's crazy, isn't it? I think once Cam's done with Origin and the buy, you can have a look at him for now. We didn't mention Mashley, but Hudson Young, absolutely. Mm, 573k. He's, he's a good buy for this weekend and the rest of the season. Do you think it's actually quite a viable tactic in round 21 when Cam Murray is back on deck for the Rabbits? That you could trade, if you've got them, like a Johnny Bateman for 600k yep. down to Cam Murray and bank... 120, 130,000. Yeah, or give your money for an upgrade elsewhere. Yeah. I mean, <coughs> you'd, you'd want to have saved the trades to be able to do it, but he's certainly someone who's going to be on a lot of shopping lists around 21. Yeah, just on the Raiders, they've got that round 20 buy we noted before. So with any of your trades this week, just double check round 20. Can't stress that enough. You don't want to be too short. I know I'll be reasonably short. Origin players need to back up as well. So I think you'll find it's one of them tricky rounds. So just it's worth a look, isn't it? I think I mean, it's worth more than a look. And I'll tell you, for more than a look, players yeah. as well, it's a great way to get an advantage on your opposition and even potentially save yourself the need to trade. If you're coming up against someone who's going to be short four, five, six blokes, then you might not even you might be able to sit on your hands that week. Yep, watch, save them up watch the, the two points roll in. Absolutely. Guys, final two <coughs> questions for this round. This one's from Ron Jeremy. I don't know if that's an alias or not. Great name. Best looking CTW keeper that plays in round 19. For me, three names that come to mind, Spy. <coughs> I'd love you to rank them for me. You've got Ronaldo Molotalo, Jermaine Azarko or Chance Nickel Klockstad? And if there's anyone else, mate, please throw them out there. How would you rank those three for 19? On the rank there, Chance at three. Not in a disrespectful way, just the other two are guns. Oh, good question. Mulatalo versus Asako. I think I'd lean just given the year he's having, probably a Sarko, but there's not much in that. He's goal kicking and he's got those two or three week period, he, probably in head-to-head -head finals as well, running home where I think he could be devastating. So the thing about Mulatalo is, right, the Sharks probably should just keep 
humming on that left edge. Mm -hmm. The Dolphins could falter. They could run out of gas. That's the only concern around Asako. You know what? I'm changing to Mulatalo. If you if you look <laughs> at Asako's scores with Tafare inside him, it's a significant drop. Yeah, because he's a ball so runner. If VTW stays there, Asako may not be as good. So that's why I've well, I've personally leaned towards Mulatalo. Yeah, but it's, I've got the same rankings as Spy. It's yeah, a so good call there, well. so I think it's worth keeping an eye on. The, the, the word out of Dolphins camp this week, and I haven't even looked into this, I just saw this on the physio's uh, Twitter account, um, uh, was that um, Brinko Lee is fit, but Tafare has been uh, preferred in front of him at right centre. So certainly want to keep out for Desi. does also uh, come back to that question, which might be, uh, is Azarko a keeper? Uh, which is worth looking it's into. It's a big question, isn't it? Um, yeah, it is. Just worth noting, yeah, the... The last play of the game last week, um, Tafade had a pretty simple catch and pass to put Asako possibly away. There was cover defence and he went straight behind. It was pretty yeah. poor execution. And Brinko Lee just does that so unbelievably well. That's his well. gift, just yeah. bang, bang. Yeah. Whereas Tafade is your runner. So that's it's, it's a good point. And final question for the week. Round 19 has been a big one. The best buy for round 20 now. I'm already sitting here in anticipation. I don't think I'm going to be able to sleep this week. Just thinking about the, the trades I'm going to need to pull off in round 20 to firstly have <coughs> a team that's as strong 17 as possible, but certainly as well knowing who's on, going to be on that shopping list with Nathan Cleary, David Fafita, Tino Fa'asua Malaawi, Harry Grant. Jeez, I nailed that Tino pronunciation, didn't well done, I? Well mate. Desi. Didn't give me a chance to wrap you. Thanks, mate. That's all right. We can chat after the show. <laughs> Best buy for round 20. This question is well from Harry Park. What do you reckon, Desi? It's the chin. The man with the big chin. It has to be. Get him in. You come back, fired big. up. He's going big. <laughs> no doubt. Even if he doesn't have the kicking, I would still get him. Mm -hmm. Hope your buddy does, though. Love that. And we'll throw in those pods as well I mentioned before. Isaac Tungo, Murray Tawalungi, just for good luck. That'll do us out here at the SC Playbook Podcast for round 19. Spy, mate, great to have a chat. Hope you're feeling better next week. Thanks, boys. Yeah, starting to get there, so... Old cup of tea is getting me better. It's time next week. We'll hopefully have had a big, strong round. I'll be feeling better. I'll be back into a cold, tinnier bloke. And I'll tell you what, boys, you've got me thinking today. There's some options that have been thrown up and I've thought of myself. My trades are far from locked in. <laughs> well done, Maxie. Good job, mate. And cheers, boys. Appreciate it, mate. Desi, been great to have you back on the desk here, mate. Cheers, Maxie. What would we have done without him, eh? We would have been screwed. <laughs> well, that's it. Well, I did actually beat Timmy in a head-to-head -head this week, mate. So, look, if you want to take an extra week, then that's fine by me. But thank you so much for tuning in. Good luck in round 19.